Sometimes through the night, if I'm if I'm late, as I always am, so I go off and do that. Sometimes I, I more often these days I get up very early in the morning. I get up at uh, so half four or five and start then. Yeah, wait, what? Well, yeah. well, that's just like, if I've got meetings late in the day, I try and compensate mm -hmm. for. Yeah. So you do a little bit of writing first, and then do your meetings. Or yeah, because once I've done something else, I can't <laughs> in the day. I can't get back into it. So I just get up about eight three. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at a little bit of <laughs>
And it doesn't take, of course it looks effortless, that's the point. But you know, that, what, what you see is the end result of months and years of labor on their part. We have another clip for you. One more, just one. Is this world protected? Check it out first, I'm still coming. Oh, there have been so many. And what you've got to ask is, what happened to them? I'm the doctor. Basically, run. It's just that it's 
the magic moment in Pac Turner Park. And also, I don't know how I'll define it, I always hesitate to say it, but there's, there's a kind of, some people get how to act in Doctor Who, some people don't. You know, there's a style point, there's something about joy and, uh, and exuberance uh, and pace and yeah, pain and intelligence. It's, it's, it's a, it's, you, some people, you know, we see guest actors coming, some people <coughs> just think, wow, he, he completely gets it. I remember mm. the first time we saw Dorio. So I'm Fisher Packer at the Oh, he gets to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's there. Yeah. But because of that, it's one of the most creative jobs that you can have as a picture team. Yeah, because you're given license to you to just be as creative as, yeah. Yeah, as possible. And it's theatrical, and the stakes are always so high. So as an actor, that allows you. It's very exciting because, you know, you're going, it's the end of the world. No, it's not the end of the world. Let's get an ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a great episode. <laughs> Uh, 
I'm Rebecca from Durham, and my question's to Stephen as well. Um, now, I'm sure it's every girl's dream is room, including mine, to be the doctor's companion. But if it couldn't be me, I'd love it if another world changes could be a doctor's companion one day. And would Stephen ever consider that? Have you ever had any thoughts? I think he could have loads of fun with it. Um, well, are you going to demonstrate? Uh, where are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, there you are. Um, well, it's, it's a thought. Uh, it's, it's not where we're going this time, but uh, sure, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me the fun. What, 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 what would we do? Well, I haven't got any ideas specifically, but I just think if we could make dots. Well, you're used to telling me that. I just think if we could make dots, I guess. All right. Okay. Yeah. I shall take it. I shall think of that. <laughs> Hello. 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 We've got, a, we've got a question here, we'll Hi. move to the second. Yes, okay. Hello, Michelle from Missouri. Um, Hi. The only thing I've managed to see of you three beyond uh, Dr. Who is Matt, I saw Christopher and his kind, it was wonderful. But I want to know, what would be your dream roles um, beyond Dr. Who? That's one question. I don't even want to get on my hands. I'm just putting that out there. <laughs> mm, yeah, she's going to be watching lots of them. Mm. Uh, I want to play um, Lady Macbeth. It's not good to say that because we're in a theatre. <laughs> 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 you, you have to go outside, what is it, turn around turn three around times. Swear. How have you seen that wonderful um, episode of Black Adder? <laughs> <laughs> Because they seem sort of like they could, you know, exist. 
and I was in the TARDIS yesterday, and I was talking to one of the crew, and he said, um, you break the TARDIS, um, and I was <laughs>
Yeah. All my guests have questions if the steam is lost. So if you have got a question for Steven, just put your hand up. Yeah. So yeah. We have a new dark hour question. Stand up. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> Lambert from Litchfield. You've got different writers for the episodes. Why do you find those writers? Are they people from other shows that come to you with ideas or their friends? And also, do they have rules that they have to keep to to keep in within the show, like certain styles of ending, for example, or are they just free reign? Well, I mean, in terms of, uh, we get read lots of different ways. Some of them are, are, are old friends and colleagues of mine. Some of them, um, Carol's been bringing on some new ones. Um, Sometimes we just find them. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's not that many people who can, who can really nail this show. Uh, you have to know it and you have to love it, actually, to, to be able to write it. And you also have to be a really top flight of writer. Um, you wouldn't do it, but it's actually one of the most demanding things. It's on the island, and it's really, really hard to figure out. And you, know, you have to be there, you have to be a comedy, you have to be a plot, you have to be able to do pace and action and all that. Very, very demanding. Um, in terms of the rules, do you know the rules are? I mean, I, I always say, and I said the rest of the rest of the time, I said it to the cast, is uh, treat it like you own it. Treat it like it's your, the people who write to it, the people who play in the doctor, well, the ones who think it's their show. And when um, you write next to the doctor, you know, it's not about sticking to rules, it's finding your people as breaking as many rules as you can find. Uh, that's, that, that's the kind of writer that works on the show. The ones who think, for this 45 minutes, this is not your <coughs> My name is Rich from Pennsylvania. The question, thank you. The question I have is for Stephen as well. Um, like you, I grew up watching Doctor Who, went to the conventions in the 80s, and worked at them and met many of the stars, some of them intimately. <laughs> 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 How does a fan like me get to submit a script or some ideas that we've had since I've been watching the show my whole life? I mean, I don't have ideas as good as yours, of course, but... Well, but, you know, the first... I mean, what I just said is the, is the bad news. I said talk like television writer. Um, yeah, first of all, you become a writer. Then you become, uh, then, then you become a very, very good writer. Then you, then you create several of your own shows and run them. And then you write about to who. Uh, and that's sort of the way it goes. I mean, I, I, that's, that's not, it's not great news. You don't break into television writing an episode of Doctor Who before you tap the television. Hmm? Just an idea. Like a, a story idea. Yeah. Um, well, we don't, but the truth is, you can't. I mean, because I don't know how to look at them. Uh, if, if, if ideas come in, if unsolicited stuff comes in, uh, and this is the worst idea, you just didn't ever to hear, but I can't look at them because uh, I could get sued if, if, if something similar turns up in the show. Um, but, you know, listen, the other thing I said, if you've got ideas, write a story about a, a character of your own. Start, that's, how you, that's how you become a writer. Don't, don't be, you can't have an ambition to be a doctor who writer. You have to be an ambition to have an ambition to be a writer and do your own things and do your own shows and do your own ideas. And, uh, and maybe someday in the future uh, you, you do a doctor who. It's, it's, it's sitting and watching the show, uh, despite the fact that it's my history. Uh, doesn't, it isn't what qualifies you to write it. Is that the most depressing, boring answer? <laughs> <laughs> okay, my son would like to offer anyone a jelly baby. Uh, <laughs> right, well, throw them up in there. <laughs> Can I bring them up? I'll go on that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
something for you, a little surprise for you in the uncut sessions. Mm. And, uh, um, what's what? Look, um, the stuff you know already, but I, I, we, we try and keep it under wraps. And, that's, uh, and you dressed as never saw. Nice. <laughs> 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 Hi, I'm Jason and I'm from Manchester. Hi, uh, this is for Matt. And if you had any ideas for the seventh series, new, new monsters, what would it be? New monsters? Well, the thing is, Jason, I leave that to the kind of people that make monsters who sort of turn up and try and learn the rules. Um, but I can tell you that we have, we have some brilliant monsters coming back, like the Daleks coming back. The Weeping Angels, which are my favourite ones, are coming back. And um, if you come along to the uh, uncut sessions later, you'll see one of the new monsters that we've got to do in three in our West. Um, so, uh, but, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm really thrilled to the Angels coming back. That's, that's the most exciting part. Thank you, Jason, for your questions. And we've got some more here. Yeah, hello. Yeah, hi, I'm Jennifer from Germany, and it's sort of a two-part question. Um, there are rumours that Captain Jack is finally going to meet the 11th Doctor, and I'd like to know if that's true, because it would be amazing. And also, if he's also going to meet River Song, because that would be scary. <laughs> Upcoming episodes, so I can't say anything about that. I don't know that's going to happen. Uh, uh, yeah, I think, I think Kit was actually Russell who first proposed that, that, that um, Jack and River should meet. Um, just possibly to work out which species in the universe they haven't done yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a terrifying prospect. I'm not sure he doesn't know what to do with himself. He said he'd probably punch Jack. <laughs> We've got about six minutes remaining, so I'm going to rattle through as many questions as I can to keep them very fast. So we've got here, and we'll go with another lady with a hat on here. Very fetching. You first, please. Hi, I'm Leticia from France. Um, my question is um, uh, Do you plan on filming in another country other than the UK and America? Is it intentional? 
intentional. Do you, do you purposely put out lines you, to make us sad? Uh, do you make? Uh, do you mean uh, tease you about future yeah. events in the show? Well, that's all fun, isn't it? <laughs> I love it. And I want you to keep doing it. <laughs> well, no. Um, I think it, you create interest about this show. You get people speculating about it. Everyone hates it when there's a cliffhanger, but they kind of love it too. So that you know, that that's what I'm doing. I'm not really just doing it to, to torture people. I'm not just doing it. <laughs> I'm also it does it does play into my love of torture. Thank you, and please continue. In that hat, yeah, we've got a, a young fan here. Hello. Hello, I'm Olivia, and I'm from North Yorkshire first. And <laughs> um, my question is to Matt. And I'll, when you did the hotel episode, were you um, told what was in the room in the script, or were you told to imagine it, what was in the room? Uh, very good mm. question. That's a very good question. Well, what was in the room? I mean, you know, it's uh, it's one of the great guarded secrets. He's a doctor, as you see. Um, I'm afraid to say, but he saw something in there which frightened him terribly, 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 beyond what frightened him. It was, it was the most appalling thing you see. Um, and I know what that thought was, you know, uh, uh, but, but uh, I can't tell you because it might be important later. You know? <laughs> but good question. I love the fact, I love the details of your knowledge. Clearly, you're an avid watcher. And I wonder if you like to come up and shake your hand. Yes. <laughs> I, I 
was always terrified of shop dummies when I was a kid. So I was thanking Robert Holmes for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I think that's, there's something about a blank face and statues. And, the, uh, and I was always freaked out, I think, a little. I think most people are, surely. Or is it I'm just more scared than normal people? I don't know. Uh, but that game, you know, one of my footsteps when you have to keep looking around and people get closer, that was one to me up. So there you go, which is my childhood neuroses. Uh, <laughs> uh, happily bestowing on the rest of the men. <laughs> I think we've got to leave. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, will you join me in thanking Arthur? <laughs> Thank you.